There's a new witness in the Stephen Avery Brendan Dassey case. Is it going to blow everything wide open? Let's talk about it. What's going on, everybody? It's me, Prairieboy77, aka Mr. Share, aka the Beard of Reason, aka the Voice of Reason. And today we're going to be talking about the Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey case. Specifically, uh, we're going to be talking about the new witness who just signed an affidavit April 10th of 2021. And we're going to talk about whether or not this is going to blow things wide open or not. Now, before we get rocking and rolling on everything, I do want to say that uh, the Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassin case does not get the traction that Chris Watts does. So if you could, please share this video out because this is kind of a big deal and it, you know, it should be talked about at the very least. All right, so first let's do a little bit of a recap for those of you who may not be all that familiar with Brendan Dassey and Stephen Avery and the whole case. Um, in October, it was October 31st, 2005, Teresa Halbach went missing. She was apparently last seen on Avery's property. Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey are charged and eventually convicted of the murder of Teresa Halbach. Now, there are some very weird things with this. I'm not going to go into all of it because it's too much for a video. But there was one thing that I saw in just looking up today that I, I must have missed before. But there's something very weird. Okay, so Teresa Halbach's vehicle is found on the Avery property November 5th, mid late morning. November 11th. Stephen Avery is arrested and charged with murder, kidnapping, sexual assault, and mutilation of a corpse. Now, how did they know to charge him with sexual assault? I know a lot of you are thinking it was because of Brendan Dassey, but no, Brendan's confession, that didn't happen until March of 2006. That was months later. So they had no evidence at all of a sexual assault. Technically, they never did have any evidence of it. But at that point, they didn't. They had nothing. So how is it that the police knew Teresa Halbach was sexually assaulted? It's very weird. There was no evidence of it. So what did they know? So I'll just let that marinate with you guys. If you have any insight into that, by all means, let me know in the comments. But that one threw me for a loop because I did not get it. But okay. So now let's talk about this uh, new evidence. Uh, this guy, Thomas Sawinski, on April 10th, signed an affidavit stating that the very early morning of November 5th, he saw Bobby Dassey and another man pushing a dark blue RAV4 down Avery Road. He was uh, delivering papers. So he saw them, he passed them as he was going to the Avery property to drop off papers and he saw them again on the way out. So I will read you his affidavit here. And then we're going to talk about what kind of impact this is going to have on the case. So yeah, I'll scroll it on the screen, but I'll also read it aloud in case you can't see it clear enough on your phone. But this is the affidavit submitted by Thomas Sawinski, April 10th, 2021. I am of legal majority and can truthfully and completely testify to the matters contained herein based upon my personal knowledge. The factual statements herein are true and correct to the best of my knowledge, information, and belief. I am of sound mind and I am not taking any, any medication nor have I ingested any alcohol that would impair my memory of the facts stated in this affidavit. I resided in Manitowoc, Wisconsin for over 20 years. In 2005, I was employed as a motor road driver at Gannett Newspapers Incorporated and deliver newspapers in and around the Avery Salvage Yard. While delivering papers, I drove my personal car, which was a tannish gold four-door sedan. I cannot recall the make and model of the car at this time. 
On Saturday, November 5th, 2005, I was delivering papers on the Avery Salvage Yard in the early morning hours before sunrise. I drove down Highway 147 and turned left on the Avery Road. Soon after I turned on the Avery Road, I witnessed an individual who I later realized was Bobby Dassey and another individual and another unidentified older male pushing a dark blue RAV4 down Avery Road on the right side towards the junkyard. Bobby Dassey was shirtless even though it was early November. The second man appeared to be in his 50s or early 60s, had a long gray beard, was wearing a worn puffy jacket, had a larger frame, and was around 6 feet in height. The RAV4 did not have its lights on. Attached and incorporated herein is Exhibit A, our photographs marked where I saw the RAV4. I'll show you that later. I drove down Avery Road towards the mailboxes, left the Herald Times in the mailbox, and turned back around. I felt very afraid as I approached the two individuals because Bobby Dassey attempted to step in front of my car, blocking my exit. I was within five feet of Bobby Dassey, and my headlights were on the entire time. The older man ducked down behind the open passenger door. I swerved to the right and drove in the shallow ditch to avoid hitting Bobby Dassey. I called out, paper boy, gotta go, because I was afraid for my safety. Bobby Dassey looked me in the eye and I could tell with the look in his eyes that he was not happy to see me there. I knew that Bobby Dassey and the other individual were doing something creepy. After I learned that Teresa Halbach's car was found on November 5th, 2005, I contacted the Manitowoc Sheriff's Office and spoke to a female officer. I reported everything I have stated in this affidavit to the officer. The officer said, we already know who did it. I provided my phone number and they said they would contact me soon. I never heard back from the police. After watching season one of Making a Murderer, I contacted Avery's trial attorneys to inform them of what I saw. I never heard back. Nothing has been promised or given to me in exchange for this affidavit. All right, so He's saying he saw Bobby Dassey and another unidentified male pushing Teresa Halbach's Route 4 down Avery Road. Now, a lot of people do believe that Bobby Dassey was involved in the murders. In fact, many people believe that because he was there. He, had, he admitted he was there. And he was one of the last ones to see Teresa Halbach alive for sure. And he was the one who had all that creepy stuff on the computer. This guy was sort of disturbed at that point in time. So it's very possible that he was the one who did it all. But now, okay. Being that I am the voice of reason, I don't just hear something and automatically accept it as fact. So I do have a couple of problems with this. One, why did he never ever follow up with the Manitowoc County or the defense team about what he saw? If he knew that and he lived in the area, he was obviously following the trial. Why was he not following up with this saying, no, no, you guys have it wrong. This is what I saw. Why are you not doing anything about this? Why did he not do anything about that? And why did it take so long for him to reach out again to Kathleen Zellner? Why the huge gap in time? This has been, they were sentenced in 2007. So that's 14 years. Why did he wait so long? And season one of Making a Murderer came out a long time ago. So there's, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Maybe he was afraid for his safety. Who knows? But yeah, something doesn't smell right there to me. This could be true. It could be made up. I don't know, but I do find that very odd. The other thing I find very odd. From where... If we go back, there was a witness who claimed to have seen Teresa Hallbach's vehicle parked on the, on the highway. So we could assume that if this story is true, that they got her vehicle from there and pushed it or drove it some way and pushed it the rest of the way. 
like all that way. That was a long way to push a vehicle. Why were they pushing it? Why wouldn't they just drive it? But yeah, even just pushing it down Avery Road, that's, oh, it's a good half a mile, quarter mile. And then into the yard and then to the point, to the place where her vehicle was found. That's a lot. That's a long way. So I don't understand why, why pushing it? Why not, why not drive it? Especially since this was like very early morning, uh, it was still dark. So it would be like before five, six AM, like somewhere around there. And yeah, I did find that odd. There's a, there's so much that's odd with this case. Like you can't even, as soon as you start looking at things, it's like, well, how the hell did this happen? Like when you have Colburn calling in the plate saying he wasn't actually looking at the vehicle, but he called in the plate number. Why would he call in the plate number? That doesn't make any sense. If he wanted to confirm the vehicle, he would say, what was her vehicle? He wouldn't call in the plate number to see whose vehicle it was. Like that doesn't make any sense. You would never do that. But yeah, there was a witness who said they saw that vehicle and called Manitowoc County and it was Colburn who talked to that, that other witness. And apparently that is when he called the plate in. So if all that's true, we know Colburn was standing at where that vehicle was off the highway, calling in that plate number. And then after that, Bobby Dassey and another unidentified male are seen pushing the vehicle down Avery Road towards the salvage yard where the vehicle was later found later that morning. So was it that many people involved in it? Are we missing a lot of evidence? What do the police know that we don't? How did they know that Teresa Halbach was sexually assaulted when there was no evidence and no one had even mentioned it? But yet they had enough to charge him? How did they know Stephen Avery was guilty when that witness called once they found Teresa Halbach's vehicle. How did they know all this? It doesn't make any sense. Nothing in this case makes any sense. But will this witness blow things wide open? Honestly, I don't think so. I don't think this will take it anywhere. There's no way to prove it. And it's so long after the fact. And the police department is obviously corrupt. I mean, that doesn't even need to be said. All the evidence that was found in this case was found by Colburn, Lieutenant Link, and other members of Manitowoc County who were not even supposed to be there. They were not supposed to be the ones searching, yet they were the ones who found everything. It does not make sense. Okay, I got off on a tangent there, but the focus is Thomas Sawinski, the new witness. Where is this going to go? Dig into this one, peeps, and uh, let me know what you're thinking in the comments below. And hopefully, I would love nothing more than for this to blow the case wide open because it is very obvious that there was corruption and both of those people were wrongfully convicted. There is no evidence linking either of them to the murder. Certainly nothing linking them to sexual assault. Nothing at all. So yeah, that's it for this one, guys. Hit the thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Join the team if you want. Links will be in the bio and everything. And I am still, as always, looking for people to participate in the documentary I'm doing. If you want to do that, hit me up in my email in the description below. And I will send you out all the questions and instructions and everything. But yeah, that's it for this one, guys. Take care, and we'll catch you on the next one. And until then, this is Prairie Boy 77 saying good day, good night, and Godspeed.